Hello, fire goddesses. Welcome to episode 63. You know, have you ever been in a situation where you get some kind of an offer? It could be a big offer, like your dream house shows up on the market and you have to make a decision whether you're going to buy your dream house or wait for the next opportunity. Or it could be something simple as one of your friends invites you to lunch. Chances are there's been a situation in your life where you've had to make a decision and whatever your process is, for me personally, when I get offers anymore, I go within and I ask my higher self. I look to my intuition to make basically all of my decisions. And when Sophie's team, Sophie McLean, who's my next guest, when her team reached out to me, and asked if Sophie could come on the podcast. It was a full body yes when I went within and asked my higher self. And I don't know if you know that feeling when it's a full body yes, but every part of me said, yes, I absolutely want this guest to be on my podcast. And as you will quickly discover when you listen to this episode today, Sophie is amazing. She's a wisdom teacher. She has this unbelievable background uh, between living life, going through tumultuous times, having an education in philosophy and building from there. And basically, in my interpretation, teaching herself what she knows today based on what she went through in her earlier life. It was really, really a great conversation. And I'm so excited to offer this to you. And I can't wait to hear what you all think about this. So without further ado, I am so excited to introduce to you Sophie McLean. Hello, fire goddesses. Welcome to the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. My name is Angela Noel, and I am a prosperity coach for the newly awakened or awake curious, driven overachiever and overdoer. After running a successful acupuncture practice in Boston for 12 years, I decided to hang my hat by closing the practice and pursue what it is that I'm really meant to do in this world, and that is to serve humanity online on a global scale. Using my background in Chinese medicine, along with the brain science of habits, spirituality, and divine masculine and feminine energy balance, I am here to help you not just understand, but know how powerful you are and that you are the person who is responsible for having the finances, inner peace, radiant health, and energy aka the fire in your life that you've always desired my intention with this podcast is to serve humanity no matter what gender you identify as to help bring out the divine feminine goddess in each and every one of you as you probably are already aware the world is changing and is begging for the goddess to come out in each and every one of you so fire goddesses stay tuned Hello, Fire Goddesses. Welcome to another exciting episode. I am really looking forward to this conversation that I'm about to have with my next guest, Sophie McLean. Hi, Sophie. How are you? I am very good, Angela. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Thank you for coming. I really, you know, I I, I looked over your website and I'm really looking forward to speaking with you today. I feel like we're very aligned. So um, I would love, first of all, if you could just tell the goddesses listening who you are and how you help people. Well, I am what I call a wisdom teacher because I had to come up with a title, right? So uh, wisdom is knowing that you hold the world in your eyes, meaning whatever your view of life is, this is what you will get. And the teacher, we all teacher, I just love this distinction of teacher. Um, you know, a teacher is somebody that passes on what they have experienced. 
And um, if you are unaware, you will pass on what you don't want to pass on, like judgment, evaluation, and opinion. But um, if you are aware, then you would choose what you teach. So I'm a wisdom teacher. I lead courses. I uh, speak. I, um, yeah, but, and I write books all on awareness. Oh, wow. Okay. So first of all, I love, I love your, your title, Wisdom Teacher. And basically what you were saying or what I heard you say is that, you know, whatever you, whatever you teach, whatever you're putting out there is what you're going to get back. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I feel like we could take this conversation in so many different areas. So I'm just curious specifically, how do you, um, you mentioned courses and, um, and, and, you take on one on one on one clients too, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And I know what before we talked online, you mentioned that you were a, was it a philosopher, right? I was trained as a philosopher. That's my traditional training. Yeah, amazing. So I guess what I would love to know is um, maybe we could start with how did you get into this um, way of being, or um, how did you get into this role? That you're in. Well, I, I got to, uh, directed into this role, right? So when I was 12 years old, I was brought up in Casablanca, Morocco, and uh, I'm French, but I had the opportunity to have my childhood there, which was heaven. And um, I was in the garden and I was in a moment of stillness. I was watching my family getting ready for dinner. And, uh, and I had a, an epiphany. I can't I mean, a download, I, I don't even know what to call it, right? So I got three insights with, and um, it was all great, but it was not a reflection of the world. That mm -hmm. was the first insight and that I had to go and find out that there was much, much, much more to the world than my little cocoon. The second insight was that everything I was going to discover on my search and my adventures was an illusion. And I must not believe any of it. And then the third insight was that I had to make sure to go on that mission and tell people it's all an illusion. So I was 12. I ran to my parents. I was so excited. And I said, oh, yeah, I understand everything. It's all an illusion. And we live in a cocoon and I have a mission. And they gave me my nickname, the crazy one that stays with me to this day. Uh, with much love, but still, I'm the crazy one. So that's how I started, uh, Angela. You know, then from the age of 16 to 28, um, I had a lot of tragedy and a lot of circumstances that had me forget about it and reach the bottom of despair. And when I came out of the despair, I remembered it all and I went on my mission. So... That is my story. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing your story. And I, I, I do hope that everything, the first insight got recorded because it froze a little on my end. But I think I have the idea of what you were saying. And, and basically, when you were very young, you got these downloads that mm -hmm. life is not what we make of it, right? And mm -hmm. life basically, or, or, or I should say life is not necessarily what we're taught, but what we what we make and how we choose it to be. And I love what you said uh, actually about you're the crazy one in your family because one of my mentors says, you know, it's the crazy ones who change the world. And that's true, mm -hmm. right? You, you need to be yeah. a little bit, you know, out of the box cuckoo to be, to have that courage to say the things, do the things that are actually yeah. going to make change in the world. So I, I just want yeah. to uh, reflect that back. <laughs> I love that. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you need to be the kind of uh, person that will not accept the statu quo. Uh, what is a routine, even if that routine is extremely nice and comfortable. You see, I my experience of life is that you either expand or you contract but you never ever stay still. And mostly people are trying to hold on to what is and avoid change at all costs. Mm -hmm. That's the source of suffering. So mm -hmm. expansion is the uh, order of the day. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, attachment, right? Is um, really attachment in the, the fear 
of the unknown and fear of change can really cause problems in our suffering, can it? That's right, because I think, um, you know, when we are incarnate on life and very, very soon after our birth, we forget who we really are. Uh, and I've worked with over 80,000 people, right? And every single one of the people I work with went through the same thing. We forget our divinity. We forget who we really are. So then, then that separation is so um, existentially insufferable for human being that we look outside of ourselves to try to ground ourselves, to 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 identify with something because now we we do not know who we are anymore so we grab onto anything money age looks uh, being married the title at your work uh, your nationality the color of your skin i mean anything we can to try to give some stability to our life wow it's impossible the universe the the earth the material world is in constant motion Mm -hmm. Everything is in motion. In fact, if if a table, if you go back to the molecular level, you will see the molecules are always in motion, right? And if the molecules stopped being in motion, the table would actually disappear. So we exist by function of change. So if you want to stop change, then you're going against the law of the universe. That's the source of suffering. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I, you, oh, I love this conversation. Um, you said so many great things. And, you know, in Chinese medicine, I'm a Ch originally a Chinese medicine practitioner. And the foundation of, of Chinese medicine is the, the movement of qi mm -hmm. and blood. And the idea mm -hmm. that when um, we're stagnant or blood is not flowing, blood is not going to the tissues, the life force, the qi is not flowing, we become sick, we get disease. And that's, I mean, I just feel like that principle goes, runs across the board in many different philosophies mm -hmm. that we as humans and, and the universe in order to, since we're part of the universe, we need to be in flow in order to basically keep up, right? Yeah. And yeah. Um, I love that. And, and another thing, um, you know, you mentioned, I, I love the fact that you're, originally um your your background is in philosophy and i'm i'm just curious if you have a a philosophy on why we forget who we truly are do you have a sense for that um i think that's the game of life right so here's what i experienced myself i had a lot of mystical experience and out of body experience so truly uh, i'm very grateful for my path and here's what I came to, right? So the divine creates what I call the quantum world, which is a world of the soul, the spiritual, beyond time, beyond space, beyond language. Uh, you can't access it with your five senses, but this quantum world is easier to experience than the divine. But so there it is. Souls get created, right? Let's say the divine breezes out and creates souls. And I have no idea why. Okay. I, other than one of my masters said to me, it's much more fun to have dinner with another person than by oneself. So I thought, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so then the souls, um, my experience of the souls is that they need to elevate back to the divine, right? So it's a, a circle. You go back to the divine and the best best, best school to elevate, heal, learn yourself is earth. So uh, another one of my masters, I had a lot of masters, um, said to me, uh, only the very advanced souls come back to us because it's a hell of a school. And it is a very difficult school, right? So the game is you incarnate. Very soon after you incarnate, you forget who you really are. Then your entire life is about shedding all the story you're making up. And by the time you reach old age, you have let go of quite a lot. And most, for most people, just a few hours before they die, they have this incredible breakthrough. <laughs> Say, oh, it was all an illusion. And then they die. 
all right so if you're lucky you realize that earlier or yeah. if you know and it's happening more and more in the world now but people know there is this yearning right inside of them so they they're stepping into it more and more hence your podcast for example right this is what you provide to, to people this kind of uh, conversation so um i my students are younger and younger and younger and through my courses they remember who they really are and then they create a life of power, authentic power, guidance, intuition. So they have the five senses plus the spiritual. I think that's again to answer your question in a long way. Yeah, no, no, I love that answer. Um, thank you for that. And, um, you know, I, I kept hearing um, the last flicker of a candle when you were talking about people, you know, getting ready to die, right? You hear these, like, you know, people they have these like they sit up in their bed and they're smiling and vivacious and they're you know yeah. full of life yeah. before they yeah yeah I, I I actually experienced it with my husband I lost my husband when I was 28 and um five days after we got married and on honeymoon it was very traumatic but um we got married and then we stopped at the saint that i liked and we prayed both of us and i gave the bouquet to that uh, saint and my husband who wasn't religious at all neither was I but we wanted to honor that saint um, uh, just stayed on his knee and pray and he got up and I said are you okay and he said um, oh yes that's it I understand everything is perfect and he died five days later oh my gosh that is I have chills mm -hmm. that is powerful it is powerful. It is, yeah. And you were in your 20s still when this happened? 28. So at that time, you said you weren't religious. Now, were you already studying philosophy? Were you, did you consider yourself like awake or curious or like where were you at that time? I, I was in a black hole. I didn't consider anything. I just died. You see, the year before I lost a child. Um, I couldn't have children anymore. I, I I was in a dark place. Yeah, yeah. I remember you saying that. And then as a result of that, like what, you know, and how did I get out of it? Yeah, yeah. I have, you know, we, offline we talked about. You said that kind of stirred things up for you. So yeah. yeah well, I spent. I I had to run his business. I had four stepchildren. So for about uh, four years, I survived in despair, literally like a sleepwalker. And then I remember to these days, one of those moments of truth, you know, I, I believe that our soul called to us or something. And I remember I looked in the mirror in my bedroom and I said, all right, you are either going to go find a way back to life or you kill yourself. But being a vegetable is not going to do it. And Killing myself is never, ever an option for me, and I hope for uh, not your listener. So I had to find a way to go back to life. So what I did is I, I, I sold my business, packed my bag, gave my house away, and went with a backpack around the world. And a year later, I had what I needed. And what did you need? Where did you go? <laughs> I, I realized... I, I went all over the world. I went to uh, went down white water rafting the Grand Canyon. I went to Tahiti for two months. I went to New Zealand and I crossed the South Pacific on a sailboat. I got shipwrecked on Easter Island. I went to Chile and Argentina and I landed up in LA. And, and I was surrendering to the universe. Wherever life took me, I went. I, I gave up all willpower, all wants, I was just giving myself over to the universe. And then I met someone in Los Angeles and that person altered my life forever. And he said to me, what do you make it mean, all those tragedy that happened to you for the last 10 years? And I said, I make it mean I'm doomed, obviously. It was totally obvious for me, it was the truth. And after a four hours conversation, <laughs> because I'm very resisting, I realized that the fact that everything happened to me 
doesn't mean I'm doomed, doesn't mean my husband doesn't love me, doesn't mean I did something bad in a previous life, doesn't mean God doesn't love me, it doesn't mean anything other than what I'm going to make it mean. And at that moment, I stood on my chair and raised my arm. I mean, it was literally an epiphany for me, the second one. And I, I, I got free, totally free. I said, I'm going to make my life mean whatever I want to make it mean. And nobody, nobody ever told me I was doomed. Angel didn't come down to tell me that. I made it up. And it was so good, Angela. It was so unbelievable. Suddenly, I had everything possible for me that I decided, okay, I've got to give it to the world. So I never stopped. I was 33. I'm now 60. And I never stopped teaching ever since. Wow. And you've been and teaching in um, spirituality, divinity, quantum field. all. Uh, well, all my, ex yeah, my expertise is to give people access to liberation, right? And how I do that is through the disentanglement of the unconscious ego. So when you forget who you really are, you build up a whole persona, a, a play really, you make up a movie about yourself, about other people, about life. And that is what we call the ego. People have a very strange idea about the ego. They think it's being arrogant or a jerk, but not at all. The ego is everything you identify with other than who you really are. So uh, my expertise is to take people through, it takes only four months, it's not uh, that long, it takes 14 classes, um, to disentangle their ego so that they can be fully the source of the play and the film they made up, and then they remember who they really are. And that moment in my courses is absolutely magic, uh, sacred, really. They, they get an experience of who they really are, and then you are free to create a conscious ego. Because if you are going to operate in the material world, except if you're going to be a monk, a nun, or, or in a cave on the hill of the Himalayas without talking to anybody. But if you're in the world, you do need an ego. But there is an enormous difference between an unconscious ego and a conscious ego. So that's what my expertise is. Then I have other courses, but they are advanced courses about spirituality, practice, and all that. But my main expertise is a disentanglement of the ego. Oh, I love this subject so much, <laughs> Sophie. <laughs> um, so, you know, when a, a student, first of all, is this a group program or is it um, one on one? So I have, I have everything. I have one on one, I have group. Yeah. And both have their plus and minuses, right? I work with you and directors or CEOs, they want privacy. The group, you hear other people and you create relationships that are absolutely delicious, okay? So uh, both have their plus and minus. And I'm rolling out in about a month's time a self-guided course because I want everybody with whatever their financial um, means are to be able to access it but it won't be rolled out for another i think three or four weeks so um i'm just curious and for those that are curious listening in the audience the goddess is listening so when you know you mentioned the disentanglement of the ego and um creating a, 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 a new i need what did you call it a new ego uh, a conscious ego. A conscious ego. Thank you. So, you know, what specifically, how, um, how do you have tools that you use? Like, and, and I'm just curious to know, like, if you could walk the audience through, like, what it's like to be a student with you. Is it, are you doing like hypnosis or like? Oh, no, 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 no. It's only a like, conversation. No, 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 okay. no, no, it's a, it's a conversation. You see, the tool we have, the gift we have that, uh, well, let me go back a bit. The mystical speak about the river of life, right? Going from the divine to the quantum to the material. And we have, in the material, we have a brain. And the brain, want, you want to look at the brain like a, a bus terminal you know a bus terminal you have all the bus that arrive and then you choose the one you want and you go to your destination so the the brain is a bus terminal of this river of life and the way you get the intention from the divine and the quantum world is through language 
See, if somebody is brain dead, they can't operate in the material world, right? So, so you need a brain. And, and language is the gift we have to operate in this uh, material plane. So language is limited when you can't talk about the divine and not much about the quantum. But on the material plane, it's perfect, right? So um, people don't relate to language as this sacred uh, uh, gift we have. You know, you, you, every single word you utter will create your reality. You don't need anything else than language. It, it's absolutely, but people are so casual with language. You know, it's, we take it for granted. It's like I'm in a room now and I don't spend my time saying, well, I hope there is enough air for me to breathe. No, I take it for granted. It's exactly the same with language. So we have conversations, not any kind of conversation, not a chit chat conversation. How are you? And if you don't mind, just listen to me. No, it's a very specific conversation that gives you access to that world, right? So um, lawyers have their own language, doctors have their own language. Uh, there is a specific language that gives you access to elevation. Mm, I love that. So, yeah, I mean, so a lot of people don't realize, though, I think the world is waking up. People are slowly realizing that everything we say, and think right that's that's it like when people thinking. are like so so thinking what you're, is in language thinking is in like exactly thinking is in language so and we're leaving an imprint with every single thought and word that we say so i love if how you said it, it's sacred yeah if we believe them yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, but I'm talking about the world of language, right? Mathematics is a language, poetry is a language, art is a language, right? So the, it's a whole realm of language. And then there is a spoken word or the, I mean, there is many language, but that is a gift we have to create our life. Yeah, yeah. So as far as the, the ego goes, you know, I love what you said that so many people think of the ego as bad. And I just for the, the goddesses listening, the, the ego is just like you said, is how we navigate through this, this world. It's, it's our version of who, who we are in this body, right? And I'm, yeah, if you could just, uh, yeah, well, insights. I, I, I you know, the, yeah, the, you're right. The ego is absolutely not bad. I mean, look where it got us. We we have progressed so much, not on every front, but technology, medicine, science. I mean, there is less poverty now than there was before. There is more education. Um, that is, uh, you know, everything that the ego has produced. And we're going through a shift that has been predicted for many years. And David Hawkins, 20 years ago, said it a shift from homo sapiens to homo spiritus. Homo sapiens is the reign of the ego. It, it is coming to an end. We have created a world of violence and cruelty and separatedness. It's time for it to wrap up. And homo spiritus is the five senses plus a connection to the spiritual. And you resist it or not, it is happening. So if you don't resist it and you get educated in the spiritual and who you really are, then you will have ease and grace. And if you resist evolution, <laughs> yeah. other than being absurd, you shall suffer. There is two kinetic energy that has you elevate. One is suffering, the other one is love your choice yes and you do and we always you know we all we do have free will and we always have a choice for where we we wish to go and I, you know I, I would love um to just chat a little bit about the you know current circumstances of the world with the sea you know that happened last year um you know there's a lot of people out there that are still in their um Self-importance is the kind of the terminology that I'm using in that, you know, like, why is this happening to me? Why is the world going downhill, all the things? And, um, you know, my, my stance is that this was, this was an opportunity really to look into who we truly are and what it is that we really want. And, I, and I'm curious to know, 
you know, is, do you have any um, feeling about 2020 and, and what's still happening in the state of the world and how it relates to our advancement into homo spiritus? Yeah, well, this crisis, right, it's exactly what we were talking about, Angela. So we have total free will. So you have a crisis, definitely an upheaval, this COVID. Um, you have a choice. You're either going to turn it into an opportunity or is, you're going to resist, right? So that's what we were saying about it. So now there is, uh, I obviously choose uh, to learn from it as I consider life as a school of elevation. I am learning and I notice that the light is being shown on everything that doesn't work in the world. And, and it's everything. So it can seem so overwhelming because good God, everything, Black Lives Matter, Me Too movement, the climate, the poverty, uh, oh la la, everything is coming right, left and center, but it is good because this light is being shown and that's part of the shift. You know, no woman giving birth will tell you it's a walk in the park. It, it, it's painful to give birth. Where we're giving birth to a new culture for humankind, it's going to be painful. So that's how I relate to it. Now, it doesn't mean I tolerate and workability or I'm a doormat. And I, I dance with the universe. Whatever the universe gives me occurs to me as a gift, therefore creates gratefulness where I am. And I dance with the whole of the symphony of life, even when I don't have an, I don't like an instrument or there is a flat note. I dance with the symphony of life. <laughs> I have learned from my experience that resisting what is, is so terribly painful. You know, we are the only species in the entire universe that spend our time saying it shouldn't be that way. Why is it that way? It's not fair that is that way. I don't want it to be that way. But you've never seen a giraffe complaining that their neck is too long or a crocodile going down the river saying I should have gone on a diet. No, we human beings just always want what we don't have. And that's the absurdity and the source of suffering. What is, is, and what isn't, isn't. That's it. The whole story. It's so, so you better like it. Yeah. So simple, but yeah, human beings make things so complicated, right? With our stories mm -hmm. and our interpretations and, and, you know, also just in living in a culture where we're taught to not have, not take personal responsibility necessarily. Like it's always um, something else, something that's outside of ourselves. And um, we, in our culture, don't necessarily, we're not raised to have personal power. At least a lot of people that I know didn't grow up believing that we have personal power and yeah. everything that we want is, resides within us. Yeah, and oh. that's, the, that's the first rule of being on the spiritual path, is that you have to be willing to be the originator, and the originator has nothing to do with blame or praise or, or cause and effect. The originator is being the source of life. You always reap what you sow. That's the other universal rule, right? You're the originator. So most people are determined to be the sufferer, which implies an enormous amount of victimization. And by definition, a victim has no power. You cannot be a victim and have any power. Otherwise, you're not a victim. Yeah. So the, the, the first rule, and there are rules to being on the path to the spiritual, is to be the originator and never look outside of yourself. The originator. I love that. I love one of my... Uh, mentor says powerful people are the source of their own power and that's just it's something that i've been really like considering this last few months such a powerful because we are we're so powerful and you know um yeah you know when it comes to conscious like consciousness like life is life is consciousness that's what we are and we have this opportunity really because people are like well you know what what's so great about you know, if, if, 
if everybody, even though earth school is hard, I've also understood that, and I, sorry, I'm like trying to formulate my question <laughs> here. It's my understanding that earth school is, even though it's hard, it's very, a lot of people want to come here, right? Like if souls want to arrive here, because is it, is it true that it's, it's where really we learn all of our lessons before we, we advance into en enlightenment? Do I have that? Yeah. I, I, I can't I can't quite answer that question. I don't know if there is other schools. I don't know if um, uh, this is the best school and I don't even know if many souls wants to come back. I don't I, I literally don't know that I haven't had that experience or yeah. that answers yeah yeah but I definitely remember choosing to come here that that I have a, a distinct memory of it. You remember coming here. Yeah, and choosing to come, being asked to come and choosing to come. Before your human existence. Uh-huh. Are you, would you be, are you willing to share that? Like what, the, what that was like? Oh, I, I, there is not much to share. That's all I remember. I remember being somewhere, or I don't know if it was being, but uh, asked to come, saying yes, coming down. It, it, it was an experience, I, I say it coming down, I don't know if it was down on earth, but that was uh, how I phrase it, yeah. and having already some uh, feelings, uh, no, emotions, uh, uh, on, on my way to incarnate in, the, in my body. Emotions, wow. That's powerful. I mean, I know that um, I have I have friends who have kids who said that they felt their spirit babies before, you know, and then they knew that they needed to, you know, move forward, right? Because their their spirit, their, their their there was a soul or a being waiting to incarnate through them. That's so cool, <laughs> so fascinating. <laughs> so. Um, I'm, I'm just curious to know, you know, if somebody's listening, because I have listeners all, all across the board, and this is obviously one of my favorite types of things to talk about, but I tend to, um, you know, kind of take my subject matters from a really basic standpoint for people who are just not, they're not there yet, or they're, I mean, obviously they're listening because, or obviously they're interested because they're listening. So for those that are listening and they're like, I know I'm interested because I'm still listening, but how do I start? How do I begin? I know mm. the way I'm living is not working for me. What advice yeah. would you give them? Uh, well, the first thing is an acknowledgement. The, the moment you tell the truth about either your life not working or the moment you have an intention to start the path to the spiritual, to liberate yourself, you're 50% of the way there. You literally, by that intention, you have already uh, progressed 50%, right? So that's the first yeah. step. Just make up your mind. I think that's what we say in English, right? Just choose. Choose a path to the spiritual. Then you want to know everything that doesn't work. The moment you're on the path to the spiritual, everything that doesn't work about your life is going to come up. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, 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 well, because... The path to the spiritual is to give up. There is no place to get to. As you say, we are consciousness. So you don't need to get anywhere. You already are it. But you need to give up everything that is not that, right? So it will come up. It will come up. And so this is why I love awareness. And awareness is the ultimate power. You know, when you teach your child to cross the street, you say, stop. Look right, look left, and then make a choice if you're going to cross the street. That, that's what you need to do. That's it. That's it. If you're committed to be on the spiritual path and you promise yourself that whatever will come up, you will give up. That is not you. You just keep, you know, peeling the onion. Then practice awareness. Just even a few moments during the day. Stop, look right, look left, and then make a choice. That's all that is needed to start. So simple, too. And, you know, again, it's like, I feel like it's one of those things where humans could really complicate 
Thank you're you. making me love my book is called the elegance of simplicity <laughs> oh i love that and is that available on amazon um yeah for people yeah, yeah. who are interested okay yeah lovely lovely yeah um you know i love what you said about how you know it's basically you look at your life and you figure out what works and what doesn't work and and it also yeah. seems like once you're on this path for those that are like, I think, you know, I'm there or I'm about to be there. It kind of comes rapid fire after that, doesn't it? The lessons are like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh what, 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 once you do it once, right? Once you tell the truth, first, you have to practice telling the truth because we are the masters of denial and lying, right? And being inauthentic. So you practice telling the truth. Okay, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. It's not right or wrong, not good or bad. It's just not what I want. And I know I'm the one sowing what I'm reaping, mm -hmm. right? So if I want tomato and I'm getting carrots, I must be sowing carrots. So, and I want tomato. So I need to give up sowing carrots. Okay, that's simple enough, right? So you tell the truth. And then you look, and the moment you do it once, you will see you survived. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. you, you made it, and the freedom on the other side of letting go is so delicious. Well, you, you will do it again and again and faster and faster and faster. Yeah, yes. Great analogy. Thank you for that, Sophie. And I, honestly, I feel like I could um, continue this conversation forever, but... Um, I know everybody listening, you know, I, I want to respect everybody's time, but thank you so much for your time. It was a really lovely conversation. Thanks for offering your insights and your wisdom. And um, as far as how, if people are listening, they want to find you, I'll put all that information in the show notes also, and as well yeah. as the link to your book. And I don't, if, do you have any other pearls of wisdom or... Um, well, I think the best way to find me is my website, right? Because yep. I, I make sure I put everything on my website so that people can see. So it's sophiemclean.com. Okay. And Angela, I really, really want to acknowledge you. You know, I go on a lot of interviews and podcasts, and it makes my heart sing. Thank you so much for taking your time to meet people, have this kind of conversation, and globally elevate the consciousness i'm so grateful that's why i always say yes to podcast i am so grateful for you i'm so grateful for you too sophie thank you yeah and that's you know we're i think we're really in alignment there it's about getting the message out that mm -hmm. you know the world needs us as we truly are and mm -hmm. um you know the more people that um hear this message the more the world is going to change one person at a time so thank you thank so you. much sophie you're so welcome thank you all right, and until next time, goddesses, take care. Thank you so much for listening to the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. If you have found value in this podcast, please share this podcast with those you care about. As you probably already know, in order for the world to change, we need to change. So spread the word by sharing this podcast or by leaving a review in iTunes. Until next time, Fire Goddess, be radiant, be fiery, and be powerfully authentic. Take care.